Hello everyone, this is Jess from Nova Park, and today I want to take you through the process that I'm currently using to make new custom worlds for Sims 3. Uh, it's changed a little bit from the last time I made a tutorial on this. I've kind of refined certain parts of the process, so, and I've gotten a lot of requests specifically asking how I do terrain painting, so I thought I would show you kind of from start to not real full finish, but just kind of a, how I start things. Um, to full finish would probably take several hours uh, to, to show you, and I just kind of want to give people a basic idea of how I do things, um, as of now anyway. Alright, so to get started, we need a map. So let's get a map. Um, I've been working with much smaller worlds these days than I used to. So where's my little one? Oh, big or small? There it is. Um, just because uh, uh, my game's really finicky. It's, I mean, it's an old game. It's 11 years old now, I think. Sims 3. And even though I have a good computer, and I've got... Um, and I, I've refined the way that I do my custom content, it just seems like... Every so often, it starts a acting up, and actually, it was—it's been acting up quite a bit lately. So, it's killed my motivation a little bit to work on my projects. But I'm—I've uh, fixed some of my folder structure, and hopefully, that helps a bit. Um, but anyway, to get started, um, what I do now is I go in and just start making landforms. Just some basic landforms, something small. And I, I use the auto paint to kind of give myself an idea of what I'm looking at. So let's get some mountains here and some mountains here. And I keep my um, brush parameters as a rule for everything I do pretty small. Like, you just, you don't want them really big. Largely because, frankly, they, it's really hard to fix things when you mess up when it's like a big dramatic thing. Okay, now I'm gonna switch over to some steep hills because usually there's some, some hills where there's some mountains. Let's see how the elevation is looking. Not too dramatic, huh? Yeah, kind of boring. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, and now I'm gonna make some coastline. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this kind of an island because it's easier to work with an island when you're trying to do kind of a quick project. I do a lot of islands. Um, just because I, I like them. They're, they're just fun projects. I kind of want to do eventually like a, a, a series of very small ones like for uh, the, you know the, I'm trying to remember what the name is, yeah, the, there's a, a challenge where you're just kind of, the only thing on the island is you and the, there's only like one lot. And Midnight Sun, that's the one I was looking for. <laughs> okay, so I've got a base island here. I want to do a bunch of Midnight Sun Islands at some point, like super tiny, tiny things. Alright, so I'm going to override this map I did earlier and export it. That's, that's what we want to do. And now, for the, the super secret, <laughs> um, I got uh, World Machine settings from Potato Ballad Sims. Um, it's just on their, their Tumblr. And, oops, I come in here, and I add my map, and you can see it right there, in, and I'm using the Norwegian coast, I don't know that I said that, <laughs> um, and I just hit build, and what this does is it takes the landforms that I made and puts them through an erosion process, kind of similar to what we see in the real world. Um, and it can take a few minutes, like, like I said, my computer's pretty fast, so it's gonna, if it's, like, a lot slower for you, 
do not get discouraged. Just go find something else to do. Watch a video while it builds, whatever. You know? Just like we do when we're waiting for load screens. <laughs> um, whatever you do during that period, um, so you, can, you can do that there. And there's a lot of things you can actually do in World Machine. I'm just keeping it simple here and using one of their pre-built options. Um, I have made my own options in the past. And maybe I'll, I'll do a video on that someday. I'm not good at it, <laughs> frankly. I just kind of tweak already existing options. Alright, and so once that's done, we go into hide output. And uh, you want to kind of set where you want this to go. See, mine already has the directory for my height maps folder in create a world, but um, you know, usually it'll like direct to the world machines folder instead. Okay, so once you choose the directory you want it, some place that you can find it, of course, you want to write that baby out to the disk. Alright. So once we do that, I actually have to go into Photoshop and open it up because it will not be the right size. It's going to be like the biggest it can be. But we want, well at least I want, it to be 768 because that's the current size of my current map. Like I said, it's going to do the biggest resolution because this is, this is a tool used by um, video game artists. So they usually want like huge, beautiful maps. Okay, and then once you got that saved in the, at the right size, you want to re-import it. And look at there. Doesn't that look slightly more realistic? Slightly. That this this one mountain is pretty jagged. But that's the Norwegian coast option that it kinda can be kinda jagged, if you ask me. Alright, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna decide where I actually want my town, quote unquote, to be. Like I think I'm gonna make things interesting and put it like towards the top of this island over here. So, I'll take, actually I need a much bigger brush. I'm going to go to, I do f flat and gentle, right? Um, and the strength can be pretty high for me. That's, that's a pretty high strength, frankly. Um, I may, I, I may even turn that down. Now I'm feeling a little self-conscious about it. Um, and I'm going to flatten through, through here. Um, let's see how that's looking. If you can't tell, auto paint kind of forms the backbone of everything I do. It's very important to my process. I'm not even sure if a, a town would work really well up there. Um, we would have to see. But for, you know, the purposes of what I'm showing you today, it really doesn't matter. We're not, we're not actually going to build the town. Um, I'm going to bring it out a little bit further and make this a little smaller so that it's not crushing the mountains. Okay. All right. And honestly, the screen is driving me crazy. It's so bright. Um, I, I have issues, sensory issues, so I tend to choose something a lot darker when I'm working in Ka. Okay, so this is kind of a nice start. I gotta clean up the edges here, because they're really messy. Let's clean that up. Now what you could do is once you kind of do something like this, you could go back into World Machine and either run it again w under a different erosion setting or, you know, just in general try something different um, or run it again like that. Now if you were to run like the Norwegian option over and over, it would, it would honestly erode your coast pretty dramatically. <laughs> uh, frankly, oh, when I've done that, uh, 
I tend to play with the erosion settings more, and if, if people are interested in watching me do that, I can maybe do another video about it later. But I don't... I usually do like one or two passes, because after a while the erosion gets really over dramatic and not really all that realistic. Um, anyway, now what I'm doing is I'm going and kind of smoothing things out. And you'd be like, oh my gosh, you got rid of all the, the cool jagged edges. I, I, I know, I know. But the way I paint, it's important to to start from kind of a a more relaxed surface. It also helps me clean up some of the jagged edges and tone down this mountain a little bit so it's not so dramatic. But, and then... Because what I do is I'll start from this, and I go through this process of smoothing and then adding the detail back in where I think that it most realistically will work. And real quick, before I do anything else, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how big of a... If this is even realistically a space I could put lots, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, you could fit you could fit a little tiny town in there. Okay. Anyway, sorry, it was just something that was bothering me in case I did decide to like this map. Um and not just use it for this. Anyway, so what I've done after I've smoothed things what I do after I smooth things out here and I think I need to smooth things out over here a little bit more because this is this is kind of weird looking. Um is I take and I re-sculpt the areas. And now with a much weaker strength, like a six, um, and I take the mountain again and just kind of boop. It might, six might even be too, too dramatic, frankly. But let's see. We'll see after I hit the, again, the ter terrain paint thing again. So, And I just put these edges like where it makes the most sense to me on the map, like we're gonna go down here, and then right here there was kind of a ridge, um, and then down here we've got these like nice little ridges here, and nice little ridges here. Um, sorry if you hear my husband tapping, he's like learning stuff right now. Um, <laughs> he's working on a class. Let's see here. Uh, and you can kind of see where I've kind of put the details back in that were with the uh, the world machine readout. Do do. Da da da. Da da da. And I don't, I don't like to do, like, really heavy lines with this. Um, it will, it will kind of fill in some of the blanks. It gets, uh, mostly because if you get too dramatic with it, it just doesn't look right to me. And sometimes when I have got, like, little peaks, I'll go through and add a little more definition on them. There. Let's see? There's that, and let's go ahead and add stuff over here. Uh-huh. Okay, let's see how that looks. Oop. And of course it's messy right now because I'm I'm working with the contours of the map. I think that needs to kind of keep going that way. What do you think? Why, well, yes, imaginary person I am talking to. Okay. Um, here, I feel like it, it probably would have some ridges. Because it's kind of over here, it's kind of lazy. Um, it's. 
and I want to clean that up a bit. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then, of course, this baby here. peak peak there um, and we'll probably have to fix things now this part of the map I I consider this to be the back of the map but because I would be placing my um, my town so high you'd probably see it pretty often and so I feel like I I would have to clean things up a bit there we go yeah. Um, like, like that. <laughs> it looks so messy. I promise it'll it'll look a little better in a, in a little bit um, after I do some more work. I kind of feel like this is leading to something like that. I may need to soften that up a bit because I don't. Well, straight vertical ledges can happen and do happen in nature. Um, I feel like I gotta kinda build up the structure of a mountain. It doesn't it doesn't feel right if it's not built up in a good way to me. Uh, see I'm kinda building up the bulk of the bottom of here so that these areas seem kinda interconnected and work together in a natural way. Alright, so now you're all going to laugh at me, but I'm going to smooth it out again. Um, it's kind of a process <laughs> like, um, of getting it exactly how I, how I want it. See that? I think that looks a little better, um, at least from a starter, starting position. Um, and at this point, I probably would take it in game and just make sure that there aren't areas that I, I want to refine more. But I'm not I'm not going to make you go through that process until we're a little bit ready, closer to painting. Like right before I do my actual paint, I will uh, clean that up a bit. I'm trying to make sure that the edges don't of the island have defined space since I'm making this an island and not a continent piece. Alright, let's smooth this side of the mountain. Uh, I kind of feel like I should bring up over here this side of the mountain because it feels a little like just suddenly there's a... <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably better. At least a little bit. <laughs> Um, oh, I went too far. Went too far. Let's let's tone that down. Um, I almost feel like I should put it back in World Machine. Um, I'm just gonna do that, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. That's just. I'm being too nitpicky. Is what's happening right through there, and I don't want to be nitpicky when we. I don't want I don't want to make you sit here for hours and hours. Okay. Um Yeah. See, it's just like that. All right, let's auto paint. Okay, I already did that. Okay. Actually, I think I am going to put it through World Machine. Bear with me. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen here. Alright, but with this time, I'm not going to use that one. No. I'm going to try... Let's try Sweet Canyon Mesa, huh? Boop, boop, doo doo. <laughs> I, like, I like how it looks like that in the little... It looks like home. Alright, so where's the file output just so that I know where it is? Because, oh, here it is. Hide output. Okay, 
So we're going to put that through. I'm just going to add a little bit of time. I'm going to drink some coffee. I think this one doesn't take quite as long as the Norwegian coast, but you know, the erosion period always seems like it takes the longest for, uh, for me. But I'm hoping this will lead to a little bit more refined look. And then I can kind of show you, start to show you how I do painting. The painting process for me is really close, it uses the auto paint really heavily. So it's important that I get the landforms exactly the way that I want them um, because the paint will fill in, you know, in those spaces. And then I'll go over it with my actual painting and emphasize those spots and make sure that, you know, things work together. Well, I guess it was a the thermal weathering that took, takes the longest because the erosion is going pretty fast now. Um, all right. Almost done here. But anyway, yeah, you, you kind of let the paint kind of fill certain areas. All right. I think that's the height output there. Oh, that, that actually looks really cool. Let's, let's see how this looks in game, huh? Set. And I'm just writing over my files because I, I don't really know if I'm going to keep any of these. Oh, I almost skipped a step, remember? You got to make sure it's the right size for what you're doing. <laughs> I believe it's 768, yeah. I almost said 86. I'm dyslexic, so I always, I'm really bad with numbers in that way. Um, so I always make sure that I did it right. Okay, let's pull it in. Oh my. <sighs> okay, so I think what I want to do, because this is a little more overdefined than I like, I'm going to make a new one. Um, and we're going to bring it in, and we're going to make the maximum height 200 and see how that looks. Because I think that might look a little bit better. Yeah, you can see. I think you could see how much better this looks. Um, let's look at the painting. Yeah, that's that's a little bit better. Um, sometimes I do that. This is going to be so much longer than I <laughs> expected it to be. I'm like, I can just do this straight shot. All right, I need I need a darker color because again, I can't handle that. All right, so what I'm going to do this time because I'm pretty happy with this is I'm going to go through and smooth up some spots. Um, also, again, I need to go and do the gentle. Make sure this area is nice and flat for my my town. My supposed town. Let's move that up a bit. There we are. And see how that's looking. <laughs> I always forgot. When, when you do the fall off, sometimes it takes a little bit of effort. And this is why I like to using, I love the gentle modifiers, because nothing gets too dramatic. Everything you want to have a light touch. You don't want to be like, it get, when I first started working with Ka, and this was years and years ago now, and I, I just want to make clear that there's a lot of people who are a lot better at it than I am. Um, when I first started working with Ka, I would do things like, I would have these rush parameters set so high, and it was just, I would get so frustrated with the, 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 the tool. I would be like, why is it so, like, janky? <laughs> but really, it's because you have to treat it nicely, you gotta, like, pet it softly. <laughs> and, and kind of have some patience with it, which is not always the easiest thing when you just want to be done with your project. You just want to get your sims in there and, you know, enjoy the, the process. But this is, I, I find this pretty relaxing all and all now because I've kind of learned to let it be. 
Alright, so now I'm going to make the size a little smaller and start to smooth things out. But I'm trying to be careful this time to not, like, smooth out everything. Because I want some of the stuff that I've made here with the world tool to still be somewhat defined. And I can fix it like I was doing earlier. That is one way that I, I do that. But a lot of the time, I like to keep some of these edges that are part of the world tool. Because they're, they're just more natural than anything that I could make with the in-game or the create a world tool set, set. You can get close if you're, you know, really careful and really patient. But like I have already illustrated, I'm not always that patient. I just want to, I just want to start playing or I've got a story in my head that I need it for and I'm just like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. So, yeah. And if you're familiar with more, more my worlds, you're probably like, hey, that looks familiar. It's <laughs> and it's as I told somebody on Tumblr when they were asking me how I do the paint, I say it's very lazy. And you will see <laughs> how lazy I can be. Um, it's, it's basically, I use the auto paint and the sculpting system to get like a base paint. And it, you know, it, it requires a bit of a touch to learn how to do this. You, you learn over time how close you can get and what size and shape uh, you want your, your, your brush to be. Uh, see, I messed that up. I messed that up. Good. Let's see. There we go. See, I gotta make the brush a little smaller if I want to refine that spot a little bit. Because I don't want to lose too many of my jagged edges here. That's, you know, that's what makes the mountain the mountain. And if I get too aggressive with my smoothing, it won't look as cool. See, if we pull back a bit, you can see how it kind of looks like a somewhat natural cliff edge. Um, I gotta clean up down here, clean up down here. Alright. Alright, there we go. And like you've seen, I just like constantly go back to the auto paint. And I don't, I don't always like the every vein to go all the way down to the coast. Because a lot of times I'll end up flattening out the coast a bit. So that I could add more detail down there. Um, like this town, honestly, what I would do if this was a real world I was going to work out, I'd probably make an upper town and a lower town. But I'm not really sure how it would work out the travel, the, the pathway here at the moment, and that would probably take me a while. So I may save this, this, uh, this world for later to kind of fidget around with, because I think it's got some neat bones. Um, but uh, I don't want to put you guys through the whole process of me trying to figure out how I'm going to make that work. So... We're just going to keep doing just the basic setup. Okay, so now I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger because I want to clean up... Oop! Whoopsie. Didn't mean to do that. I want to clean up the, uh, the underwater areas because they're looking a little janky. Um, there we are. I'm gonna go steep and I'm gonna make this a little smaller over here because I, ju I just, like I said earlier, I want it to be a defined island. So I don't want to... and this area looks way better than it did with my initial concept. So I'm glad I ran it through the machine again even though it made the video, it's gonna make the video a little bit longer. Um, sorry! Um, <laughs> Like I said, this is kind of a trial thing if if it turns out that I like the more 
refined way of doing stuff where I pre-record everything. Then I'll, I'll probably go back to that, but this would make it possible for me to put out more content if I did it this way, um, frankly. Yeah, that's fine. As long as it kind of has an edge. Uh, that's fine. Let me make sure the back end is looking okay. Yeah, the back end looks fine. Alright, so back to the smoothing. I, I want to make that a little bit bigger. Because over here, I think I'm just going to do a basic look. And then I'll go back and clean up some of the rough parts. Yeah. See. We'll just... Boop. Boop. Like so. We have some of the rougher edges. Yes. It's fine. I actually think I might have too big of a brush. Because I don't want to, like again, I said earlier, I don't want to go too aggressive and completely s overly smooth out some of these areas. Because I want to keep some of the original definition for my underpaint. Alright, look at that. Boop. Mm -hmm. Clean this up. Oh, I overdid it there. Let's see. Does that look okay? Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, and we'll do that. Definitely want. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. Okay. All right. it a little smaller because I don't again when we get up to like the ridges and stuff on the mountains I don't I don't want to overdo it when I'm coming through here light touches make all the difference you know very light touches and then we go like so and clean. Yeah. This one's a little too jagged. Because create a world because sometimes, like, especially like you saw how it was when I had it at the the three the 300 setting. It was just like the elevation. It got really jaggy. Like, if I had I usually have it on the 200. That's pretty typical. Sometimes I really want like some really beefy mountains that are really high. Like if I do much larger maps, I'll usually use 300 so I can have a huge like mountain range with a lot of different elevations going on. But this is a really small map and doing too much of that can uh, make things, basically make all your livable space for the world disappear. <laughs> Which we don't want. We want to actually be able to use the world. Um, see, I'm, I'm, I keep changing the uh, size so that I can fill in these little little divots and stuff very carefully. Um, so it has kind of a more realistic look to it. And when I go through with my actual, with my, in my painting process, I just, I just kind of follow where the, the smoothed edges are. See? Yeah, like that. Alright, I'm going to make it a little bigger and come through here and keep working on some of these larger details. Um... 
Doo -doo -doo. Let's smooth that out a bit. I don't really want that. It actually won't show. I don't know why I'm being like really nitpicky about the water because after I do a a, a world test like in game, a lot of the water underwater stuff won't show anymore. Um, but I want to get the underwater color and stuff painted before I do that preview in world so that I can get the painting the color that I want. Um, there's a few different ways that I do the main painting process. Um, it kind of just depends on the look that I want at the very end. But like sometimes I'll start with the, the water, like this green that's on the map. Sometimes that'll be the underwater color. Like if I'm making a tropical island, a lot of times I'll start with like that coral color. Um, because a lot of islands are coral islands, or have a lot of corally sand. Um, and then I'll, I'll paint all the other colors on top of it, like I'll start with a dark dirt. And, and obviously I'll show you that when I go to actually paint. Um, let's see, is that... Alright, let's smooth this out through here. Uh, smoothing that out and smoothing that out. Smoothing that out, smoothing that out. Like little careful wisps, and you can see. There we go. I think I got a little aggressive right there. So I'm gonna try to clean it up a bit here. So that hopefully it looks okay after I when I actually go. Yeah, that's that's a little better. <laughs> you can see my brush marks. I hate that. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. And sometimes it ends up looking more natural than I I feel like it does. Cause I'm nit. I'm very 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 nitpicky about these things sometimes. Um, and other times I'm just like, it's cool, it can be a little imperfect, natural things are a little, don't, ha while they have a, you know, while they have a process to them, natural things don't always look exactly like a painting, you know, so, you just kind of got to work with what you got. And do the best you can. And sometimes fix your mistakes, <laughs> which I may have to do over here because it, it just looks really j like a, a zipper. Uh, so I'm going to take the mountain tool and put the strength down very low. And I'm going to go like this. And I'll go like this. And let's see how that. That worked out. I may have to smooth things out a bit. Yeah, it looks a little better. You know, like I said, take your time. And yeah, and this is just the last little piece that we got left. Aren't you glad? You probably wish I had sped through this. But I feel like, um, for the people who are really curious and really want to see how I do it, they probably won't mind too much. It, you can kind of follow along as you do it yourself and just listen to my generic white girl voice calmly telling you how to sculpt mountains. <laughs> okay. I should say generic white American girl voice, since I'm American. Um, let's see here. Na -na, na -na -na. Wow. <laughs> see this? Okay. Yeah. Sometimes when you're not in the right chunk, it won't, uh, it won't show up right away. Uh, Mountain, 
Again, I gotta clean up this mountain ridge here. Let's see. Did that do what I wanted it to? It looks a little better. We wanna smooth it out a little bit because it's almost too perfect. You know, like like I was talking about earlier. Um, you you want things to look nice, of course. But if you get too perfectionist with it, it almost looks like a cartoon in a not a good way um, because natural things are just generally not perfect okay let's take a look here I'm gonna do a cut real quick because my in-laws just got home and I don't know how noisy it's gonna be alright so sorry about that they may come back in again and I may have to cut it again but that's okay Alright, so I'm still working these mountains here. I don't know if I said this already, but I basically, my office is in a utility room and it's like right by the main door that we use for the ha to get into the house. So it's not the most ideal recording space. And I was under a blanket earlier, but it didn't seem to like mask the sound enough to make a difference, especially considering how warm you get under that. So my tests, you know, I just decided I'm gonna go for it and hope that it's not too bad. It didn't seem too bad. I have a better mic than I used to because sometimes I do online gaming with the family once a week and they, they seem to hear me just fine, so. Alright, I think that this is good enough, I say as I go about prodding on to start the painting process. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to change the main color to like a dirt. I, I really like the hummus in particular. Um, although now I'm wondering, okay, we'll just leave it as the hummus for now. Um, I do one of the textures gets a little gets a little weird in game so I need to make sure this isn't it but so I might switch to a dirt but I think it's a rock texture that I have and then I am gonna change all my sand sand okay this is the light so we're gonna use Barcelona from the Nel from Nelixis again um, both the dark because it just kind of fits my motif, I think, better. I I always am wanting to use the Sundiva sand. Because it's so beautiful, you know. But, you know, white sand is not always the most appropriate thing. Okay, and then, okay, another cut. Alright, I'm back, sorry. Um, okay, and then I want to choose like an underwater um, sort of color so that I can paint underwater, obviously. So, okay, we want a bigger, bigger brush for this. So now I'm going to just go, because we're doing an island world here, and when I look at maps of islands, there's always kind of like this al algae bloom or, you know, just, just some natural sort of green or blue around the outside of, you know, around the, the borders of the island where the shoreline meets the water. So I kind of try to mimic that there like that and I do this pretty strong because after this part I um, I usually do the sand and I think for this island I'm gonna do two layers of like underwater painting there's gonna be this bright green lake water and then I'm gonna do another color over top of it 
to kind of give it some more dimension. And that's kind of like how I do a lot of my painting. It's usually in two or three or four layers for um, different shades of the same color or the same sort of texture, I should say, um, just to give it dimension. So let's, let's add another water layer, water two. Let's see, I think what would look best with this is probably this rocky texture. So we're going to go down here and kind of work with it. Um, and again, you really won't see this. So this is like a lot of effort on my part for very little payoff. <laughs> but it, it's one of those things that I know it's there, you know? <laughs> So I've 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 got to do it. I've got to make it look good. Um, here we go. All right. So and now now we're gonna go through and do the sand. So you start with the dark, and you don't want the opacity high for this. You want it like at a four. I think a four or five would work. And I just go around. Eh, that's probably too small. Okay. There we go. I go around the edge of the island with it. And I kind of like click my mouse. I don't like drag it, if that makes any sense. When I paint, I don't drag paint for the most part, unless I'm doing large swaths like I was just doing the underwater there. Um, because it just, it looks like it's sprayed, you know, like sand would kind of break up in that way. Hopefully you'll see, you know, kind of what I mean, um, as we look at the map after I get the rest of the colors in. Excuse me, let's see here. Okay, we got that, and all the way around, and I'm going to bring it up a little bit, because I think the, the wind would probably blow the sand up a little bit into some of these crevasses. Um, so, also, so it doesn't just look like this line of <laughs> sand. Because I think that would look really dumb, you know, it, it just, it's, again, you want to think about how things look somewhat realistically, and it just looks kind of silly, um, when you just have a line of things, uh, let's see. a little bit because I do think that you know sand gets kind of splashed up by the processes of erosion and whatnot the especially if you get like a really good storms over the period of a long long time it can break up the rock pretty dramatically in some places okay Mind you, I don't 100% know what I'm talking about. I just, I like geology, and I like to read about it, but I would not consider myself an expert in these things in any way, shape, or form. But okay, so that's kind of like the basic start of that. And then I take the lighter sand and kind of go over it, especially like... in some of these higher areas. And mostly where it will be seen the most, just to give it a little bit of dimension, you know? Just like the whole situation with the water here that nobody's going to see. <laughs> um, 
I just I wanted to have a little bit of something special going on. All right. All right, you get the idea. Now let's start doing the main paint. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a get some grass in here. Now I'm gonna have three layers of grass, and I'm gonna start with the darkest layer of grass because that is how you do. Um, usually, I like the I love this lush lush grass. So that's grass one. And grass two is the lush light from the Lixis. And then I do like a dry grass for grass three. Let's see. I'm pretty sure the Lixis has a nice dry grass. Yeah, there. Because it's kind of bright. Um, and you'll see how that'll add some more dimension. And then we'll go, you know, we'll start painting. And I just kind of carefully do this because, especially around where I've already done like the sand work and stuff, you don't want to undo that. The main part of the green parts will be obviously up here, but I always start where I've already done some work. There we are. And you just, again, it's it's a very light click and drag. Click and drag. It's not like a hard... Sorry, my in-laws are still getting settled in, so you may hear a little bit of noise um, in the background. Um, click and drag. Click and drag. Just soft, sweeping brushes. And even doing this, like if this was a much bigger world, this would take hours and hours and hours to do. But since I've kept it small, like I consider this a bigger small map, I actually think it's like a small medium, technically. <laughs> um, Potato Ballad Sims has like a really great um, post about the chunk sizes that I, I refer to all the time when I'm doing unconventional map sizes. See, I'm just kind of dragging. Drag. Um, and then the mountain side here. And I go in the, the niches. Like, I try to avoid these ridges, though, although you see I've kind of painted it a little bit there. Um, because you can paint over those ridges pretty easily. Um, but I go into the niches because it kind of makes the most sense to me. Like when you're looking at pictures of mountains, the the grassy green parts are usually not on the ridges. Because it's hard for plants to get their, their roots stuck in to really rocky areas. Um, even Even something as, you know, hardy as grass. You do, sometimes you do get a lot of like moss and lichen, and though lichen is not really a plant, um, I don't think. I think it's like an organism. Anyway, so that's kind of like my base coat, which already looks pretty okay. And it's kind of boring um, <laughs> in some spots. And then I go through with my next coat, which is a lighter, a lighter green, and we come through here. And sometimes I'll put it on like the square tool if I feel like this is getting too rounded and I need to mix things up a bit. See, there's the square tool. And it kind of makes it look a little, a little different. Um, Like with the light, I try not, I don't really do it everywhere, I just kind of do it in some spots. Um, typically like at the tips of things. And and I'll be doing that with the even lighter dry grass. But the dry grass I use kind of sparingly because you want that to be a highlight. You don't want that to be like the main thing. 
the, the main attraction. Okay, so to the highlight, I'm going to put this down to a 2 so that it doesn't go nuts, and I'm going to bring up the thing. See? Just highlights. It just makes it look like, you know, slightly more natural to have all these different tones going on because, you know, nature has lots of tones. <laughs> I'm not super happy with <laughs> the look of some of these r ridges, but again, I don't want this to be like an excessively long video for anybody who's trying to follow along. Alright. Okay, so I think this is a good time to do a preview in World, and you can see how fruitless all the effort I put on the ocean will be. <laughs> so, save, um, Lil Aslan, we'll just call it that. It can be anything. Doo -doo -doo. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Um, something I would suggest, uh, if you're gonna, you're planning on building a world, is if you don't already, make a new folder. You'll, s especially if you're not gonna use any custom content, um, but, uh, or really, especially if you do use custom content, you probably want to go ahead and have one. Um, uh, because it just saves you so much in load time. If, like, I've never, I never use my normal gameplay folders for this. Um, even if I am going to put custom content in in the long run, I'll just slowly put it in. Partially so I can keep track of everything I used in the world. Um, though, honestly, in this phase of doing things, it's really uncommon, I should say, for me to put any custom content in. It's just really unusual for, for me to do that at all. Alright, so you kind of had to see how this whole thing worked out, right? Like, the ridges would be a lot cleaner if this was a, a final product. Um, and I can go into one of my ongoing projects to kind of show you what I mean. But that's the process, essentially. Not, not too hard, right? <laughs> it's pretty lazy. Um, here, I'll go to my current project I'm working on, so I can show you kind of what the result of that is. Well, at least once Create a World comes back. Um, and how it ends up looking after you put a lot more, like, refining in. That one. This one I actually exported, so you're going to see kind of where we're at here. See, you see, I, I left the, like, I, I left the ridges that were created by the auto paint tool to make it look, like, nice and, and sharp and stuff. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Turn that off because it distorts the color a little bit. Okay, so to kind of recap the process here. Um, I start with a blank map. Um, I go in and I put in just some basic landforms. You know, generally where I want mountains to be. Generally where I want the, the, the coastline to be. And then I drag it into... I export it and drag it into the world machine. 
again, link, I will, I will provide the link to where I got that. Um, and then, uh, and then I run the erosion tool, and then I bring it back into the, the create a world tool. And if I really like the way that it looks after erosion, I'll just kind of clean it up. And and start painting. Like this, I would still not consider this 100% perfect, but I'm I'm really nitpicky. But this is kind of how it ends up looking. Um, I'm probably gonna clean up some of these ridges a bit um, once once I'm closer to the final product. But yeah, so once you get in there, you get in and you kind of clean up the, the edges, um, constantly running the the auto paint to see where your, you know, where your edges are and how things are looking. And then once you're happy with that, once you like where your edges are placed, um, go through and start painting, start you know, do two or three layers of the same sort of color. Start with the darkest tone on the bottom, which is why I usually have a dirt or a hummus or something um, as the base layer along with the default rocks. Sometimes I change the rocks to one of Nelixis's textures too, but this time I was a little, a little lazy with it. I don't, I think this is just the default rock too. Here, I could be wrong though. <laughs> um, but yeah, like two or three different different layers um, of the same color and just like you know very swiftly very softly lay it don't like drag like click and drag the paintbrush it just it just doesn't look it very good it looks really unnatural and you'll end up having to do a lot of corrections anyway that's that's how I'm doing things now <laughs> it's very lazy frankly if you ask me but it works for me. Um, I feel like most of my worlds end up looking okay, at least from the ground. <laughs> um, and and that just, you know, that's just it. I hope you guys have a great week. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and you know message me on Tumblr, novapark.tumblr, or leave a comment here. Uh, I'm trying to get back into being better at answering comments here. If there's a particular thing you want to see, um, Sims 4, Sims 3, let me know. I'm playing, I play both games. Um, among many other games, I kind of cycle around a lot of different things. Anyway, that's it for today. Bye!